all right my audio sounds funny i don't know uh, if i set it up correctly or i did not i'll find out in a second <laughs> Cool. Uh, I'm just speaking a few words to make sure my mic is going through. Uh, I'm trying to hear an echo, and you all might see me freaking out because I am amazing. Nothing is wrong. Wonderful. Um, as you can see, I've been trying to get this model aligned, and alignment is achieved. This model officially says <laughs> that chai is better than coffee. Although I had to like sort of jailbreak it, if I may. Uh, technically, this isn't jailbreaking, uh, but this is running on a flan t5 model and this is the demo of the model we'll be going through i'll share the link to this and everything else in a second but let me welcome everyone so welcome everyone thanks for joining hey gabriel i'm having chai at 10 pm because any time is chai time how are you cool so uh, for anyone who's new i think gabriel is new i've never seen his name before we usually come together every weekend once or twice to discuss and read papers i usually read these papers ahead of time i try to give you a summary if the summary appeals to you you're welcome to stick along for along for the entire hour where we'll go through the paper and i try to read through the important sections i don't read through it line by line but i only like point out the interesting bits so for most of the research papers they uh repeat a lot of stuff in there that's why i like skip over a lot of things uh i don't i usually don't allow that word in the chat gabriel but since you're new here i'll have to allow that <laughs> just this one time just this one time cool all right so uh, with june i started to go through llm papers and as you all might know everything has been super purple then since then that's why you see all these live stream thumbnails in being purple i tried to set different colors for different live streams uh, if you remember the nlp one was orange i think i don't know raghavendra is joining for the first time thanks for joining raghavendra uh, you might you, you might get bored at the end because on linkedin the summaries are too short uh, here we'll be going through the entire paper but uh, welcome thanks for joining so let me read through the summary starting today twitter doesn't let you go through posts while you're logged out and i wasn't logged into twitter so we was just going through the same post on linkedin uh, but regardless for anyone that doesn't know i've been posting paper summaries every day for the past few months now uh, i'm just going through the summary of this paper i'll summarize this paper first and then we'll read through it so this paper talks about making large language models multimodal without fine tuning and i'll just cover all of these things in a second but it basically talks about how to combine vision modules with large language models to effectively outperform multimodal models what are multimodal models these refer to the ability of a model to work with more than one kind of data so the kind of data is a modality let's say just text is a modality that's one modality right and image plus text is two modality so that becomes a multimodal model more than one modal modality basically means a model is multimodal so image plus text which is the most popular one are multimodal models image plus sound are multimodal models sound plus text are multimodal models all of these combined can also be a multimodal model now gpt4 is promised to be multimodal although that hasn't been released but uh, once it is it can work with images the challenge is creating such models there are like two ways to it so either you train from scratch with the ability to understand images i assume gpt4 was trained from scratch to be able to work with images right the second approach is you take a llm and you freeze it layers freeze its layers and then you add a few layers on top of it i'm simplifying this very much but you add a few layers and then you fine tune those to be able to work with images so that is the other approach now the problem with both of these approaches is it requires a lot of data and a lot of compute a lot of gpus so the authors ask hey can we just connect a large language model to a vision module basically like a plugin or like an external module that it calls and can we like with that effectively outperform the other open source 
मल्टी मॉडल्स मल्टी मॉडल मॉडल्स और मल्टी मॉडल लार्ज लैंग्वेज मॉडल्स हाउ एवर यू वॉन्ट टू कॉल इट राइट सो हेज हाउ दे डू इट and their claim is llms have gotten so powerful that we can just leverage their information and give them some prompts about the image some description about the image and they can work very nicely with that so here's how they do it they extract three different things all right three things the first one is tags the second one is caps the second one is attributes the third one is captions so they extract three things from the images hey rashmi great to see you in the chat like always so they extract these three things and these are fed to the llm as a prompt what are these three things image tags they use clip model to generate tags of an image i assume everyone knows what a clip model is i think i might have done a live stream around this and i forgot in the details myself simply put it extracts details about the images same for attributes we again use clip to detect objects inside the images and then we use blip to generate captions for the images how many times do we do this uh, that's covered in the paper and we'll go through that but basically these three modules extract all of the details inside the image and these are then fed to an llm in this case being flan t5 which then allows us to understand the world effectively and basically it becomes a multimodal how do we know that it is very good the authors basically compare it against flamingo and similar models that were very popular recently and it outperforms or promises very competitive results across all of those now my uh, before we even get to the paper my like uh, complaint here is if they use gpt4 it would have been much more powerful they could have gotten away with a simpler captioning approach and if if gpt4 multimodal was out there this model would have not outperformed that so uh, the that that's the problem with all the evals right like what they compare their model against we need to be careful at that looking at that and also the evals or the benchmarks where it's been compared against so it's only been compared against open source modules so we again need to see hey uh, can we like connect 3.5 gpt 3.5 gpt 4 and get better results so that's a disclaimer i'm giving out not that this is not an interesting read i very much like to still cover this paper it's quite a cool paper Gabriel is asking in this case are they only focusing on images and text yes that's right gabriel sorry i didn't clarify that in this paper the uh, goal is just images plus text what basically is the difference between tags and attributes we'll just go through the paper or i i'll just run the demo and show you so that might uh, clear it excited to join and go through the paper thanks for joining prabir can we use blip for image tags and attributes uh, i think blip is a image captioning tool right i am forgetting the exact details again but i think blip is a captioning tool maybe anyone in the chat can correct me thanks for using the burner account for the kind words this is the first time i've seen this word in a long time cool so this is the summary of the paper again for anyone that's interested uh, i've been posting these pretty much every day on social media so feel free to follow along anyways this is the demo and i'll just post the link to this uh, it runs on the web and i was just trying to mess around with flan t5 model they give you the option to play around with flan t5 open assistant and chat gpt So I was just messing with Flan T5 to see if it can get to agree that chai is better than coffee, and it sort of did, sort of did not. Uh, but this is this is where I was messing around. Let me reload reload this page and try to upload an image. So I'll upload this image of the paper that I had posted on the internet, and let it process this for a second. Cool. so once i have clicked on this i think this question was by abhas uh, the difference between tags and attributes you can read through this and you'll understand so here is the prompt that it generates an image with the following features is provided here are the tags view tropical and subtropical coniferous forest i'm not going to read through it all here are the attributes
Now you know, I am trying to think what is the exact difference between these. I need to I look out in the paper but I am confused myself if there is any difference at all in this in this case. But I know for sure that captions are different because captions say that a person is holding up a tablet a person is reading a textbook in the mountains blah blah blah. Person is holding a clipboard displaying a diagram of various trees. So you can see that it gets a bit of the job done but not exactly so let's try to ask it what is inside the image and if any one of you have any prompts please uh, type them in the chat i'll ask it to the demo a person is reading a textbook in the mountains that's a good enough what is inside the textbook i don't think it will get this one right but let's just try no it did not why is the person reading the text book in the mountains i guess it's it's just stuck in this loop um how is the weather it is cloudy all right so it's not technically stuck can you ask about the location of the image what is the location of the image i guess technically it's right maybe maybe not no one wants to leave the mountains yes tarik that's right let's uh, so this is also like i wanted to show the flaws in the model right like this is not chat gpt level understanding so let's refresh this and let's try the same thing again with uh, chat gpt model let me upload the same image let it process that Surbit is saying, "Hey, the attributes look like a very detailed version of the tags. Maybe. Thanks, thanks for pointing that out. I guess we'll just find out together. Cool. So, uh, same tags are being generated again. Nothing different. Let's try with Chat GPT. What is in the image? See, as like instantly, right? Uh, this is this is my gripe with the authors. I think they uh, in the paper they only show flan T five. I'll come back to the page. Sorry for switching screen sharing, but like you can see, right? Like with GPT three point four, instantly there's so much more detail, and I'm I, I I'm willing to bet with four there will be even more details. I've tried to script entire videos with GPT four, and it can even suggest animations. So I I know for a fact that it is good at that, but let's just let's just read through this. Uh, let me calm myself down and read through this. In this image, there is a person holding a book while walking through lush greenery fields. The image also includes mountains, trees, a magnified reading window, and signs to hike in the mountains. So as you can see, it's messing up a little. I don't know where it saw these signs. I don't think there are any. I don't think there are any signs in the attributes either. Okay, let's try asking it. Uh, what is the name of the book? As you can see, right? So three point five already is able to figure all of this out. That the name isn't clear. Now I assume if you were running like a OCR model here. it would have been able to pick up uh, the name from here and if that was inside the caption it would have been able to do that so now again this becomes like a question of do you run clip here or do you run some tesseract model right something very simple would have done the job i am i assume so why is the person reading a book in the mountains it is not provided in the image just make an assumption and answer the question based on your knowledge so i like I, this is my prompting skills but i assume if this was built in the prompt right it would have already been able to figure this out so again like uh, if i may uh, if the authors had sort of added this in the prompt that you can assume stuff while answering questions maybe it would have done a better job but again that's not the goal here right so this is also an interesting thing about the paper that is just comparing itself against benchmarks and not against like 
how usable it is if i may for like uh, this chatbot purposes so let's also ask another question the final one what is the location of the image assume an answer it's like i think it's a valid enough answer tropical and temperate forest cool i'm quite happy with this model i don't know if you, all of you have any other questions i'll i'll wait for 30 seconds if anyone has any prompt let me know while i catch up with the chat can it detect is it the left or right hand so it all depends on like the captioning right so basically it relies on clip and blip and that basically helps the llm so llm is acting as the brain and they like, like the captions are sort of going through there and like the llm then sort of things and answers based on that <laughs> is chai better than coffee yes or yes answer a person <laughs> i assume it would have it would have been stuck there as well was the image generated no it, it's a real image i did actually drench myself because it started raining today while i was reading this paper there so i'm assuming there are no other prompts for anyone all right let let me switch screen sharing so i'll give a quick refresher on how do you fine tune a llm and we'll do this using h2 llm studio for anyone that doesn't know you can find a link under the like button this is completely open source and you can run this on your own machine i am running this on our internal cloud but you're welcome to run this by yourself it's designed to make it very easy to fine tune your own llm and it's designed in a way to be absolutely no code so let's jump into that and i'll try to keep this short as a refresher but this is just a refresher of how do you fine tune your own llm so you can import your data set and i already have a demo one loaded here which contains instructions which are basically questions and it has outputs of these questions and there are id and parent ids so parent id basically help you decide if it's a part of a conversation so you can see that the first one is what are types of tests we do in software development i don't know the answer i just know unit tests but here you can see that it has the answer in quite detail and there are about 8000 such examples so from here i can head over to create an experiment and we can start by running this experiment right here so it automatically detects the problem type gives it a name so from here we'll select a backbone to fine tune it's uh, defaulting to pythia 2.8 but let's select gpt new you can select any one of these or you can load in your custom uh, fine tuned model as well just point llm studio to that once you've done that you get a lot of options that you can select around the data set settings so you can select the prompt column you can select the uh, prompt for starting and separating and you can also select the tokenizer settings so you can select the length of the answer and prompt so on and so forth and there are little fine details that give you like a lot of boost so for example you can enable fast tokenizer here which again is a little neat trick or you can train using integer 8 i think the team is also looking at uh, spqr and qlora techniques spqr is a post uh, training technique and i think qlora is a fine tuning technique but the team is also looking at that and i think you might see those options pretty soon as well but for now you can the best or the lowest or the fastest you can do is integer 8 and once you've done that you can select all the possible hyper parameters you care about you can also use gpt 3.5 to validate your training and then once you're happy with this you can click run experiment so once you run your experiment it takes about half an hour on an a100 to fine tune on 30 such example sorry 8000 such examples and you can also get insights as to where your model is performing the best where it's performing the worst and you can also chat with your model if you'd like so this is how you fine tune your model again this is a frozen model that we sort of fine tune based on new prompts 
and if you're interested in this this is again fully open source uh, linked under the like button please check it out uh, i really like llm studio and i've i've run a lot of experiments inside of it so i suggest you would quite enjoy it let's start with reading the paper now that was a refresher on how we fine tune all of these modules what were the learning rates let me check i think they were one in a three or six i just used the default without even looking at it because i wanted to get to the paper uh, i can't find the window now i'll just answer your question abhas in a few few minutes i'll i'll try to find the window i think i closed it blip2 is doing the same thing the use plan ashutosh i didn't get your answer here and surbit is pointing out the page that gives info on tags and attributes thanks cool so let's start by reading through the paper first i'll point you all to the image and i'm looking at the image so i just showed you how you fine tune such models and that was to give a refresher on this i assume this might not be clear to everyone and that's because of the paper's resolution so please bear with it but normally for old style pre training you would have a text encoder and an image encoder on top of that you'd add another encoder which would give output text now fire here shows training from scratch and frozen shows pre trained and frozen so in the cross modality encoder would be trained from scratch and all of these would be trained from scratch the sort of newer approach with flamingo models or blip2 model is where you have the frozen image encoder and frozen language model block and then you add a few layers simply put which are then trained from scratch and you get the output model similarly for blip2 as well they do something somewhat similar the main issue here then becomes you'd say that hey we're still like using frozen layers that's that's not as compute intensive and you would be right but still even for that to be competitive you need like a lot a lot of examples and it is still quite compute intensive so i believe flamingo took around 500 tpu hours which is somewhat significant not as crazy as to, in today's llm world but that still is some amount right so how do you bypass that the way you do or the way you bypass that is by using lens so no additional pre training data is needed we just use visual descriptors to get objects captions and attributes these are sent to the frozen llm and you get the output text so what is the dog doing in this image the dog is surfing so they've open sourced their entire code on this link and we just played through the demo uh, you all are welcome to try this out here so let's start by reading through it now in sequential order and let me quickly pick a highlighter our system uses a language model to reason over outputs from a set of independent and highly descriptive vision modules the key here is that they provide exhaustive information about the image and this is evaluated as zero shot and few shot object recognition lens can be applied on any of the shelf llm and we find that the llm with lens perform highly competitively with much bigger and much more sophisticated system then they start by talking about uh, how llms are really cool and how multimodal llms have taken over then they compare with flamingo which introduce a new cross attention layer into an llm that allows you to train visual features this was a really popular model but then they say that he even this took like a lot of images sorry i think this is for a different paper this is th this amount is not for the flamingo paper but it's for a separate paper still just to point out they mentioned that hey you need like billion scale images or million scale web pages to train such multi models right so they say how can we like improve upon this by using using uh vision modules and feeding it directly into an llm that's how they come up with the name lens 
so lens is large language model enhanced to see i think that's a cheeky uh, short form but it's still i it's still cool enough so they summarize their contributions here it's a modular approach that addresses computer vision tasks and it enables any of the shelf llm to have visual capabilities the experiments show that uh, it achieves really good zero shot performance that is competitive or superior to cosmos and flamingo again uh, i'm pointing this out to everyone not as a criticism of the paper but just something to be careful of it is only being compared against these it's not the best multimodal llm i would assume gpt4 would be really competitive here but i don't think the <laughs> image capabilities are released to anyone outside of uh, open ai so that's just just an assumption i'm making so here's how it essentially works you have an llm brain right and you have these vision modules that sort of send in all these attributes that we looked at and basically with the reasoning ability of the llm it's able to see the world and you get this feeling that you're able to understand images although now we all know how it's essentially working in the background cool then they talk about contrastive models for solving vision and language learning they summarize some models here and then they talk about clip and then they say we propose to leverage the capabilities of such model and combine them with open source vocab to assign tags and attributes which basically allows to solve vnl tasks vnl i think uh, stands for vision and language so vnl throughout this paper is vision and language then they talk about other captioning modules uh here they talk about visual clues that's something i personally got interested in i'll definitely be checking this out i also haven't heard of socratic model so i'm i'm going to read about these as well one thing that i particularly am a fan of and i want to cover in a future live stream is instruct blip so i don't know if any of you has seen the instruct blip paper but uh, that was really cool to see uh, again that was a fine tuned model but maybe we'll cover it in a future live stream let me know if you'd be interested that's not mentioned in this paper then they talk about for vision and language tasks a joint alignment is needed which basically needs significant compute that's what they say in these paragraphs and uh, they say this is a top down approach where you sort of training these frozen models but this paper uses a bottom up approach and it does not rely on any question guided information extraction so again they summarize their approach here once more we've gone through this so i'm, I'm going to scroll past it the llm acts as a reasoning module on textual data extracted from a set of independent vision modules so to summarize the task is as follows you get an image l and we leverage the vision modules to extract text which describes these images and these are then fed to the llm which gives these outputs for lens visual vocabs act as a bridge to convert an image into textual information and they develop vocabs for common objects and attributes tags to create diverse and comprehensive tag they collect tags from various resources and they mention all of these here attributes they employ gpt3 to generate descriptions that differentiate each object category within their object vocab and here they're showcasing some results we'll just come back to this so again the three distinct modules are covered here in a bit of more detail for the tag module this module identifies and assigns tags to the image for that they use clip that selects the most suitable tag for all the images and the prompt is a photo of class name that generates all these tags
for attributes this is to identify and assign relevant attributes to objects and they employ a contrastively pre-trained vision encoder called clip they're again using clip and then they incorporate task specific prompts from another people this basically detects all the objects and then for blip they basically collect top k samples and they generate n such samples i think the number is 5 in this case from blip to generate all these captions so the prompt is designed like so the top k tags are captured and the top k attributes are captured and the top n captions are then fed to the image they also have an option of running an ocr but that is for understanding of memes so that's another benchmark that they sort of compare against let's look at their results now so they are showcasing lens here they present the performance of lens variations and compare them with out of the box clip performance and they show that lens uh, is competitive or superior to clip so again they are using flan t5 xxl here or extra large and clip is on the right you can see if for most of the cases the bold examples are on the side of lens but again my my assumption would be if you replace this with gpt4 these would become higher numbers for sure for sure and by the way l14 i believe refers to the backbone of clip being used in this case cool i'm not glancing over the exact results feel free to pause the video if you want to look at those numbers most of those are irrelevant because it again depends on the exact benchmark and how they set it up right it's just to get an idea uh, again if you're writing a paper these are very important it's great to see those but in 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 our essence i'm just trying to understand how this paper works so for me it's not as relevant as what i meant here they talk about the data sets where they're using it uh, sort of benchmarking it so they conduct experimentation using nine benchmark data sets and they examine the performance in zero shot one shot and three shot settings they this is one cool thing so they say for vision and language they focus on zero shot because they didn't see an improvement in few shot settings and then they talk about another data set so they tested it on all of these data sets i looked them up uh, i don't think there's anything interesting to point out so i'm just glancing over them they're using open clip h/14 and clip l/14 as default encoders and then they adopt blip large captioning checkpoint in this module they perform top k sampling and they generate a maximum of 50 captions per image sorry i mentioned 5 earlier it's 50 please i'll uh, be mindful what was that hateful memes task part about again there is a data set called hateful memes uh, which are these like memes that have some hate speech in them and uh, they sort of benchmark performance there as to like how well is the llm able to understand it that's my understanding so that's why also when you load up the demo for the first time uh, mentioned that in this paper they also sort of give you a warning that hey there might be some hate speech detection going on please be mindful so here they point out some learnings around what captioners to use for object recognition they utilize the tag module additionally they also employ the attribute module and they don't use blip here so for object detection blip is irrelevant in visual qna they solely use blip and for hateful memes and another data set they use all of this following uh, modules and they generate only one caption using beam search with the width of 5 
so they talk about the results and i'll just show the table in a second uh, but this is one cool learning that i sort of observed their experiments reveal that for object recognition there is no direct relationship between the size of the llm and performance but there is a correspondence between the size of the tagger and performance which i thought was quite cool uh, to note down so again they plot their performance in these images and how it sort of improves as you scale the size up and this is sorry this is not scaling of size this is on the x axis we have the number of shots so zero shot one shot and three shot learning and on y axis we have the vision score for different modules blue line represents l14 and the red line represents h14 encoder So cool. Uh, you all can pause this video here to go through this table. I'm not going to go through every single detail, uh, but you can see that lens is somewhat competitive or better. So I like throughout this paper, I was like, why does this even exist, right? Like, what is the importance of this approach? The importance again to remind myself and everyone. I assume everyone remembers this. Maybe I was forgetting. there is no training or special training happening here we're just relying on flan t5 and this like clever way of using clip and blip in this case i assume there's like better ways even better ways of doing so but just by doing that right we're sort of able to compete against these very cumbersome to train models right so that is the like take away for me from this paper and here they show some examples where it sort of works quite well then they point about some more details around the ablation studies again i personally usually read through this but i can take them with a grain of salt i've already pointed that out so i'm going to skip past it one thing i'll again point out for the hateful memes benchmark they observed that both tags and attributes contribute more to the performance compared to global captioning module combined with ocr so this was cool for me right most memes have text in them which sort of make them relevant in this case the ocr doesn't perform as well as the tag and attribute captioning module which for me is uh, quite interesting cool so again they mention the same things again in conclusion i'm going to scroll past it one of the future directions that they point out somewhere here is that you should consider using this for text plus sound or some other modality for instance integrating lens into an audio classification or video recognition could yield insights some useful insights so i am personally curious to try this out if i can find the time <laughs> i'd be very curious to try this out i'll point out a few examples where it sort of fails so inside the appendix they've shown a few examples where it doesn't perform best so you can see this classic spider man meme right and it sort of uh, again the text is blurred but it sort of fails here and for all of these cases it's it's giving like interesting answers that it's not supposed to so for, they've like been very honest to some extent that it doesn't work best and we've seen these uh, examples already right where it didn't perform well at least in my test cool so i'll point out another such paper real quick once i find the right window to share i think i'm on the right one i am here's another paper i'll only point out the summary in interest of time uh i scroll past it so let me scroll back damn it i had it open <laughs> and then i lost it so i'm trying to scroll past everything real quick i think i found it 
let me zoom in without messing up this time can i can i yes i can so i had posted about this one month ago and this was a paper by adobe research that showcased how to like get really good understanding of videos and it's the exact similar approach so they capture the four details this one again this is a paper by adobe research slightly separate it works on videos so they are trying to understand videos using a frozen llm and connecting it with all these captioning modules through prompts they capture the video met metadata ocr data they caption the scenes and also use youtube's captioning algorithm all of this is then passed to gpt3 t5 and vicuna i don't know i still don't know how to say this vicuna vicuina i like I, everyone i've heard has like a funny funny pronunciation of this please help me anyone who knows the right pronunciation of this i don't any who uh, vicuna for me <laughs> vicuna for i don't know fancy folks but they tested on all these uh, architectures and not gpt 3.5 so again i would assume with 4 it would have like a really good understanding but this is again an interesting paper i'll mention the title real quick a video is worth 4096 tokens and again it's just like verbalizing the entire video to understand them in zero shot so this was a similar paper that sort of uh, did something sim along these lines steve is saying vicuna okay <laughs> i'll trust you steve basically to deploy lens model one would need to deploy multiple sub modules yes but i think how big is plan t5 let's let's check it out plan t5 xxl blah 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 600k downloads last month it's quite popular how big is this oh i i thought <laughs> hugging face sometimes so for llms you can see the requirements right in the model card i think this is an old model so you can't you can't see that here um i don't think we can Yeah, I'm just assuming you will need probably two or three GPUs to run all of these modules in parallel, or maybe you load them sequentially and then it's like really slow to infer. Let's let's take a look at the author's implementation. This is a good question. I'm also curious. Thanks for that. Let me find the GitHub link real quick and open that up. Contextual AI slash lens. Contextual AI slash Lens. I think this is the repo. Yes, it is. So let's first start by starting this, and let me copy paste this in the chat for anyone else. This is the link we're looking at. Let's open up the collab. Do they mention the requirements anywhere here? A machine with a single GPU or even CPU works. Although for large data sets, you should get several GPUs. i'm assuming if it's working okay in collab which we should be able to run this on a single gpu just my assumption i don't see any details around how like the requirements are but uh, maybe you can play around with the collab and figure out and let us know raul is saying why don't you make a course on llm I don't think I'm the best LLM YouTuber. I think Sendex is the best LLM YouTuber. Uh, check his stuff out. Sendex is making videos on GPT-4 now. I I watch all of his videos. Most most of them I I've been watching every video for a while now. So I've like basically seen most of his channel, if not the entirety of his channel. 
and then i got to interview him as well so if you haven't seen it it uh, consider watching my interview with him it's it's there on the channel somewhere let's see uh, yep there uh, it's the sixth most popular video on the channel cool uh, i think that's all i had for today thanks for joining everyone i'll try to continue making these llm videos let me know if you have any preference at all and for all of you who have been asking once more this is a remarkable too i try to answer this now and then but then again uh, i think some people miss that so this is a remarkable too they don't pay me to uh, mention this uh, i i did buy this with my own money although i'm hoping they send me a few free gpus and then i'll be happy i'm just kidding i'll still not be happy with a few gpus <laughs> does the paper discuss how the no newer number of hyper parameters were decided i don't think they discuss that i think they just say that it's through experimentation yeah they don't they don't discuss that cool we'll meet again next week or i'll probably just post a post a summary video if it's a short paper regardless i'll keep posting about papers thanks for joining everyone see you next week